right, there we go, guys. And we're back, and we have some video. Hang on a minute, guys. One other thing. There we go. Let me go. Actually, restart that. There we go. Yes. All right. We're in there. Okay. Let me just adjust this real quick. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome, everybody. It's Anthony Bjorns from Mission Star Podcast. Uh, thank you guys for coming by. Um, that's it. I'm doing. I'm doing it solo. Um. Oh, it's I'm doing a solo today. Uh, I would be normally joined by Greg Deeds, if you see the profile picture up there. Up there. Um, but he's not here today, so it's going to be just be me. And I'm going to be doing the podcast alone, which is fine. You know, I can I can talk to you guys. You know, get your guys thoughts and whatnot. And uh, if you're not here, then, you know, hey, it's another day for me to talk about podcasting, talk about video games, whatnot. Um, so, with that being said. We got some, we got, we got a short list of news stories to talk about, and nothing too much, but we got some stuff for here for us to, to go. So, with that being said, uh, let's get straight into the news. So, where to begin? Let's talk about Splatoon. Now, Splatoon uh, just ended uh, their last uh, Splatfest. Splatfest, what, their, this was their final Splatfest they were doing for Splatoon. Uh, it's been an ongoing thing, you know, there was hot dog versus marshmallows, there was, um, there was a time where it was like, uh, uh, the Transformers, like, uh, Autobots versus Decepticons, um, it was really cool, they were definitely, um, they were definitely, uh, uh, taking just ideas and just kind of giving, in a, you know, a, a, an excuse, not an excuse, but like, just a kind of a, um, an opportunity for people to come, to come back to Splatoon, play it, play on which side, you know, and then see who wins um eventually the they and they had one last platoon um the game is still up the multiplayer still will be up and it will still be uh the service will still be ongoing you know until you know whenever the nx comes out and hopefully we'll see like a a, a splatoon too um but there was last one it was team marine versus team cali literally the waifu wars <laughs> um so it happened uh, over the past weekend, or I'd say by the past two days, from Friday and Saturday. And the final results are in. And the winner of this past weekend's final Splatfest was Team Marie. Uh, Team Marie won it very close. I think it was like 360 to 340. Very close. Um, but Team Marie won, and Team Kelly lost, which I'm kind of sad about, because I'm Team Kelly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh... I was gonna say, uh, it's it w it's been a good run for the Splatfest. I still think it's still really awesome for Nintendo to support this game for like as long as it has been, and um, it's great that they finally have one last one last good final Splatfest. And maybe they'll keep the servers up, like I said. But will this be it for Splatoon content? Probably. I don't see anything else. They've put as much content as they possibly can in the span of uh, when it came out. Um, and Splatoon as a game, like, definitely came out where is a new IP, it was a fresh take from Nintendo, and it's something that I, I and many others did not, uh, weren't expecting Nintendo to come out with such a new IP, because, you know, it's always usual, usual you know, Nintendo, Zelda, Metroid, whatever, whatnot. Um, and they take very few chances on, on, on rare opportunities to have a new IP. Um, so this time around, we have a new IP, and it's Splatoon, and Splatoon totally was awesome. It, you, it used the Wii U gyroscope actually pretty well, the characters are great. Uh, the even the single player is actually pretty fun too as well. Um, the multiplayer is awesome. Like quick two minute match and get in, get out. Like Splatoon is definitely a game where I felt like it's definitely, um, it definitely was a game that I think Nintendo really needed to become relevant in the in the game space um, with the Wii U. Now I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring it over to the NX, whether it be the same version or it be like the, 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 the sequel to it. Um, but we'll definitely see how how it'll go with Nintendo when in terms of what they'll do with Splatoon. Um, but uh, we'll definitely see, again, you know, sad to see the Splatoon Splatfest ending, but at the same time, it's still a really good game. And people, if you haven't checked it out, if a Wii U, definitely check it out. Uh, you give her cheap, I think, at this point. So, um, yeah, but Splatoon, good game, good game. All right, so going from that and going to something that I feel... Um, is near near dear my heart, I and mean, when I mean that by that, because I am in the fighting games community, uh, there was an announcement. So, for those who don't know, um, I was at Evo last weekend. Virtually today, last week, I was there in the Madeleine Bay, Madeleine Bay. Yeah, I can't talk. Uh, for finals day, 
And uh, one of the big things that were announced at EVO on, on Final Day, among with the other characters that were shown uh, during the, uh, the event, um, was the, uh, the announcement that there will be an EVO Japan. Now, EVO, for, don't know, for you guys who don't know, uh, EVO uh, is usually held every year in Las Vegas, um, every middle of July, um, for the biggest fighting tournament in the world. They bring a bunch of money that goes into this, um, not only on the production side, but we're talking about also prize money as well. And on top of the many entries that get for the game. Um, and the, the thing about it is that uh, it's always been the big, it's always been a big thing for a very long time. Now, uh, having said that, having an Evil Japan kind of an equivalent to what we have over here in Japan, it's going to be very interesting. I'm curious to see what exactly going to be the games are going to be most likely to become, um, most likely to become like the games that are going to be you know, on final day for them. Over here, we have, you know, for this year, it was Street Fighter V, more Kombat X, Guilty Gear. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee, um, and Ultra Marvel's Capcom 3. Now, for Japan, I'm kind of curious, because Japan is, is a different... It's a different market, and it's a different... Um, I would say it's a different taste when it comes to what they like over there versus what we like over here. So, for Japan, um, it's going to be... My, my guess is going to be very different. Um, I think that Guilty Gear will be on top. For sure, I think that Street Fighter V will be on top for sure. Uh, as far as other games other than that, um, while it is huge over here for Melee, it isn't over there in Japan. Um, I'm kind of curious if Blades will make it up there in the top, you know, top games for for Sundays for the show. Um, and I'm just very curious what they're gonna do over in Japan. So um, that's cool. Uh, I I think it's a pretty cool idea, and they're expanding from going from uh, going from. Uh, uh, I was gonna say, sorry, I'm distracted by Twitter. Um, <laughs> going from uh, Evo USA in terms of like what games we have here to what Japan's gonna have for Evo Japan. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, pretty sure it's gonna be. Oh, excuse me, sorry. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be streamed on Twitch, but in terms of hours wise, like that's gonna be like probably at a time where uh, <laughs> most of us are asleep over here, so they might have to catch it. I might we might have to catch it, you know, at, at a very early time or very weird time for us to watch Evo. Japan, so we'll definitely see how it goes. Um, but it's cool. Hey, you know what? Evil Japan, I'm digging it. So maybe I'll go out there one day. I don't know, and <laughs> join and join people to go check out what Evil Japan is about. Is about. But yeah, Evil Japan is happening. Uh, detail as far as that is happening is going to be at Tokyo Game Show. So Tokyo, Tokyo Game Show in September is coming up pretty soon, actually. Uh, so we'll definitely see how it goes when it comes to um, to Evil Japan. But we'll definitely see. We'll see. Uh, so going from Evil Japan. To a game that I'm surprisingly shocked it's back for some reason. We're talking about Sonic. That's a name I'm not talking about in a very long time on this podcast. Um, so this past weekend at San Diego Comic Con, uh, there has been a number of announcements in terms mostly with movies and a bit, of, a little bit of games. Uh, one of the games that was announced this past weekend was uh, that there's a new Sonic game. Uh, and as far as like what it looked like, what it's going to be, it was all unveiled this past weekend. And lo and behold, it's called Sonic Mania, which also happens to be a just throwback, a throwback, a old school, just like the way like it was way back in the day for Sonic uh, in the classic Gen Genesis era. Now, what I mean by that, and you see on screen in a minute, is that it basically is Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, I the Sonic the Hedgehog, like the, the original with sprites and all, um, just like Genesis. Uh, apparently, what I found out. Um, is that the guy who is making this um, has done mods for a while uh, for the Sonic games um, and uh, has done some really good stuff. I, I think his name is, his, his tag name is Taxman, I want to say. Um, and he's done some really good stuff, but I've heard. So apparently they got him, they hired him, and they have him made a, a new Sonic game, sprites and all. Um, and from the looks of it, this is great. This actually, I am, it's funny to say, I'm actually really excited for this Sonic game. This Sonic game looks really, really good. Um, the game looks great. These sprites look awesome. Like, I'm excited. I now have been this excited for any Sonic game for a very long time. Um, and seeing it back in modern age 
and seeing it like with new animation and new sprites, and it's coming next year. That's crazy to me. That's kind of crazy to me to think about. Um, so yeah, like it's 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 cool to see that Sonic is back. Um, now whether oh let me change that real quick. Hang on a minute. Uh, boom, save. Okay. <laughs> um, it's crazy. It's crazy to think about the fact that you know. Because the question always arises, like, what exactly do fans want? What exactly do we want out of a Sonic game? And, you know, ever since the transition to 3D, it never was quite the best. I mean, I have a guilty pleasure when it comes to Sonic Adventure 2 only because that's my, after my childhood. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, you know, what exactly do fans want, like, out of a Sonic game? Like, it's, it's definitely a different thing. It's definitely something that I think that people, were, you know, don't have the answer for. And they always, you know, say, you know, it, you know, it should, it, it should be something like the original. It should be something like, you know, where it was like, you know, going left to right, you know, going very fast on the screen. And apparently, that's the answer. Apparently, that that is the answer to what fans have been wanting. Because the minute I saw this, fans were actually losing their minds. They were freaking out. Twitter was going ablaze, and people were really excited for Sonic Mania. And uh, it's. I have not seen this type of level of excitement for a Sonic game in a very long time. And to see it come out and see how much hype is generated and how much it has already gained from a lot of fans who had dismayed the game and the series and the company for a very long time. Maybe something that, you know, finally they gave back to what made them good, what made Sonic good. And uh, it's it's crazy. It, it's, it looks good. I'm excited for it. And I want to see more of it. Um, now, given, given we've been... People, fans of the, of the genre, fans of Sonic, have always been through this process where a new trailer, and then it's, you know, it's hype, hype, hype it up, and it comes out, it's complete shit. So, I'm curious to see what they do with the game, if it maintains our style, if it maintains this gameplay, and they don't do anything else to oversimplify, but at the same time, don't complicate the, the game. Then I think this will finally, after, I mean, there's been several other Sonic games, you know, Sonic Colors, Sonic, 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 Sonic Colors, sorry, and Sonic Generations, and other games like that, um, have been good for the Sonic series. But, outside of that, there has not been that many great games for Sonic the Hedgehog. This might be, this might be the very one, developed by Sega, that actually is good. So, we'll have to wait and see, but so far it's been it has definitely generated a lot of hype. Naysayers are coming around to this game, and I'm really, really excited and really wanting to know how this will turn out. Uh, it's coming out next year in 2017. They put out a specific date, but um, if I were to guess, I want to say early 17, 2017 next year. I want to say like around Feb, springtime. You know, uh, the whole like quarter. Uh, mark, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Marketing quarter, you know, the, the, the thing that, you know, in, in the game industry thing. It, you know what I'm talking about? I, sorry, I, I'm a loss of words. <laughs> uh, but Sonic the Hedgehog definitely is coming back, and I'm excited. And that, that's something I've not, not said in a very long time. Um, so, so uh, with that being said, on to our next story. And this story is talking about Ubisoft. Now, Ubisoft uh, recently... Uh, was on IGN, I believe. Hang on, let me go real quick. Uh, Ubisoft, very impressed by Pokemon Go. This is an article on IGN.com by Jonathan Dornbush. Uh, Pokemon Go has continued to demonstrate its success weeks after its initial release, and its efforts on the industry has gone unnoticed by other publishers and developers. We are very impressed by what Nintendo has been able to achieve, Ubisoft's co-founder and CEO, Yves Guillemot, uh, said during the company's last quarter uh, sales call today. Uh, when asked about the success of Nuanic Labs Pokemon Go, uh, in regard to Pokemon, uh, in regard to Pokemon Go, uh, Guillermo was also asked whether Ubisoft had anything in the works akin to the app or specifically using the augmented reality. While Guillermo did say Ubisoft is working on a product using AR on the way, it's something he made clear. It's not exactly that kind of Pokemon Go, is. Uh, and it goes on to kind of explain more about this. Um, so basically, Ubisoft is trying to capture or cash in on the Pokemon craze. Uh, now, while he did not specifically say what exactly they're working on that is similar that has AR, um, but it, 
the same time, um, they kind of can't help themselves and say like, you know, look, Pokemon Go is really, really popular right now. People are playing it out of their minds right now. People are getting together. There's actual people who are coming together in huge mass, you know, like this past weekend they called the Pokemon Crawl, where people, hundreds, thousands, well, thousands, but I say hundreds of people are coming together to go look for Pokemon off their phone app. It has been nuts, to say, to say the least, for this game. And I played it. I, I didn't want to play it for a long time. And then it's like, you know why I got to play this game too? It's all about, it's a, it's, it's a bad game. It's it, The game is horrible. But it brings uh, the, the fantasy of bringing people together to catch Pokemon in real life has actually worked out very successfully. They've made so much money off of this. So I'm not surprised that Ubisoft wants to take a stab at this and wants to have something wants something you know similar to Pokemon Go. The problem about this is that Ubisoft they don't have any IPs that's recognizable. Like if you think of Ubisoft, what do you think of Assassin's Creed? Uh, you think of Raven Rabbits. You think of Rayman. You think of um, um, what we call it um, the uh, <laughs> the shooter franchise they have. Um. Oh, uh, Tom Clancy's series, you know, like Ghost Recon or uh, Spinner Cell, whatnot. They don't have any notable people that you can definitely like um, latch onto or ident identify. Like, the, you know, because I think it's Raven Rabbit. But, I mean, there's also Assassin's Creed, which that may actually work. We have, you know, a bunch of Templars and a bunch of Assassins. You can pick a side, you can go in and you can choose, you know, which. Which side you want to be on, um, and you know, go from there. Um, but you know, the problem is that you know, there's <laughs> we have seen that the Pokemon Go people have been using it. You know, as much good positivity has has gained in the news, there's also some bad parts where people have been definitely abusing people to like, you know, hey, we're gonna set up Pokemon lore, and we're gonna rob you, and people fall for it. So like, think about Assassin's Creed. Think of like, you know, say like in the game, you have to go to the top of a tower to gain some point or some access, you know, and then like some kid and freaking is an idiot and is like trying to be an assassin and falls off the fall tower and dies because of it. Like it's, I could see it happening both ways, but honestly, the point being that Ubisoft doesn't have it, does not have, does not have any IPs. Um, I cannot talk today, Jesus. Does not have any IPs that's really recognizable Um, that you know, Pokemon Go has. And if you think about it, Pokemon has been around for a very long time. It's been around since the 1990s? Early 1990s, maybe 1980s. In Japan, I think it was 1980s. And then really catch on to 1990s over here in the US. Um, but Pokemon's been around for a long time and like, there's been countless Pokemon games since then. Um, so when the Pokemon Go came out, these are people who are playing these games. They're not only just, you know, little kid age. We're talking about people my age as well. We're talking about like, the, the, the 90s people pretty much we're talking about which are you know ranging between like you know, in between like 25 to 30 um and just like everybody's is playing because right now it's just generation one pokemon right now so ubisoft doesn't have that ubisoft is not a company that had that's been around for a long time to have um a markable ip or more remarkable characters that people can latch on to and that's kind of the problem that ubisoft has if they want to go toward this idea um, but you know what? Hey, if they want to go for it, you know, they can go for it. I don't think it will be a success, but they could catch on the, on the coattails of what Pokemon Go is going on right now. But, uh, I don't think it will work, but hey, you know what? I, I was wrong for on this podcast. I could be wrong again, you know, later on. So prove, prove me wrong, Ubisoft. Prove me wrong. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Speaking of classic games, um, <laughs> Guess what game is back after and this is a game that was like announced and out of nowhere this past week and I didn't even know about it until like I looked it up I was like oh shit I'm talking about oh don't tell me I forgot god damn it <laughs> I always do this uh I always forget one other thing to add anyway, hang on guys um actually I can use this uh -huh. so as I do this uh the game I'm talking about is Pac-Man Championship Two. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, we saved it. Yes, awesome. So this past weekend, um, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 was announced. Um, and um, this is a game, when this came out, 
it was super popular. It was like right along the lines of Geometry Wars 2 I, when that came out. Um, it was really fun it was on Xbox Live. Um, I saw other platforms eventually as well. Um, but uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition was really fun. It was really great. It was a Pac-Man game that was on steroids. And now they announced the second version of it, which is even crazier than the last one. Um, it's cool. I like it. I, I definitely love Pac-Man Championship Edition, the first one. And seeing the second one announced this past weekend just got me very, very excited for the game. Um, and, like, definitely taking some new ideas. Um, and it's it's cool to see it back. It's cool to see it back. I wonder if it will have the same success as, as Pac-Man Championship Edition 1. Um... But time will tell. I mean, like, right now, it looks really good. It looks more the same than the last one, except even crazier than before. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see how that goes. But I think that's crazy. That's a, that was announced past weekend. That, out of nowhere, like, just surprisingly. Um, but, you know, I can't really say much about it other than the fact that like, it looks good, and I cannot wait for it to come out. So definitely have a, have a better idea and better opinion when it comes out. And probably, you know, be a review. Who knows? Who knows? Um... Oh, yes. I believe this is made the last story of the day, actually. Uh, no, I got one. Or, I got two more. Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't talk about this last week because you know, I was at Evo, and there's no show last week. Um, but, what I will say, where is it? Uh, no Man's Sky. Did I forget this one, too? Oh, my God. I am horrible today. Holy crap. Um, all right. So let me load up the video. I, uh, I feel like I, I've done this, and I... I've done, you know, pretty good job, but that's not really, I'm pretty horrible at it. Um, anyways, No Man's Sky has gone gold. Um, now it has been a long time coming for people who who backed the Kickstarter. This is something that they've been wanting for a very long time, and finally, after so long, the game has finally went gold. This game is ready to be shipped, and it's gonna be coming out, I believe, this year or next year. Um, the game is coming out, and for a lot of people, people they still don't know what the game is exactly. And that's kind of for the longest time this game had problems with. Just like, what exactly is this game? Like, do you shoot things? Like, is there a story? You know, what are these big robots that you're fighting against? Like, do you go and harvest planets? Apparently, I think the best way to describe this game is space the game. Space exploration the game. Um, it's basically what it is. There is some sort of, like, story to it in terms of, like, you're trying to get in the center of the universe. Um... And you're trying to find out what exactly is in the center of the universe. And nobody knows. And for all we know, like, you could be in the center of the universe and then you become a policeman or, you know, a police cop in this universe. A uh, robot, per se. But, like, it has been a very mysterious game. And, like, people, the developers that went out there over and over again trying to explain it. And, like, even them, even them are trying to get are really irritated about it. Um, so, it went gold finally. And... There's been a lot of hype behind it. There's a been a lot of speculation as far as what type of game this is, and people even I even see people saying like, you know, I'm, once this game comes out, I don't have to play any other game forever. Um, so it definitely is crazy the fact that you know it generated this amount of attention, but at the same time, stop. <laughs> at the same time, um, we would definitely have a lot of people checking it out and seeing how it goes. Um, well. I personally don't have any investment into the game. I am very curious as far as like how exactly it will play out uh, when it comes out. I mean, this game is definitely where, it, again, very mysterious uh, in terms of what type of game it is. And whether it be something to where it's going to be a game that people are going to, it's going to be critically you know, acclaimed that people are going to lose their freaking minds over, then yeah, you know, it may be that. Or maybe complete ass. Who knows? This is game is this is, it feels like more and more games and video game companies have become more mysterious when it comes to the games and products, and it comes to the point to where like you know you have to buy the game to figure the damn thing out. So No Man's Sky went gold, and you know, congrats to them. Now we get to finally sit down and play the damn thing to realize what type of game, what what is this game at all? Um, I'm more curious about what the critics are gonna say, and as far as like what um what exactly is going to be the reaction from a lot of fans well, yeah there you go no man's guy um all right so our next story and this might be our last one actually hang on let me check real quick oh no 
Let me, do, let me do that one last story. QuakeCon. Yes. QuakeCon is next week. You thought, like, okay. QuakeCon is next week, uh, which I want to go to one day. QuakeCon is held in Austin, Texas, uh, and it is held for a couple of days uh, from August 4th to uh, Saturday, August 6th, for a three-day event, the biggest LAN party in the world. Uh, in the in the be in the bring your own computer area. Um, on top of you know very cool PC mods as well. So one of the big announcements this past year was at E3 was the announcement of uh, Quake Champions, um, which I'm very excited about. Um, all they showed was a CG trailer, but they have said that they're going to show more information about this um, at uh, this year's QuakeCon. Now, as far as like what exactly is going to be and what it's going to play like, we'll probably. If there's any indication, it would be very similar to what QuakeCon, uh, QuakeCon, <laughs> what Quake, uh, uh, Quake Arena, or games of that nature, um, which is the arena-based shooter, you know, multiplayer, you know, find, you know, shooting against other people uh, in a competition. Um, so we will definitely see more information as it comes out next week. But for those who don't know, they do have a stream. Uh, it's going to be, uh, let's see, so streaming events. Uh, are going to be uh, starting next week at uh, 3 p.m. on QuakeCon's uh, website. Um, and uh, they're going to have like panels they're going to showcase as well. Um, they're going to have some competitions including, uh, you know, uh, Doom, uh, multiplayer, um, other Quake games as well, um, and other such events. And you can check it out at QuakeCon.org for more information. Um, but uh, it's going to be... Pretty awesome. It's gonna be pretty sick. I think that uh, we'll definitely get some more information out of Quake uh, Quake Champions. Um, uh, as far as like you know, this is Bethesda's. You know, Bethesda and uh, it, it are, are you know kind of hand in hand. Like what they it, uh, let me rephrase that. It is below Bethesda in terms of, like they're in, in the company. <laughs> so we might see more information about other games as well. We might see more information about uh, probably some other Bethesda games out there. Maybe use some more information about Fallout 4 DLC. Uh, we might see some more information about, um, what else was there? Fallout 4, uh, maybe we'll see Prey. Maybe we'll see Prey 2, or, no, it's just Prey now. Uh, we'll see Prey, maybe, at, at QuakeCon. It'll definitely, you know, be awesome to see some more of that. Um, we might even see more as of Skyrim, uh, new, the new thing that they announced, the, the HD remake. Um, so yeah, like, I think that, uh, I think we'll definitely see some more stuff, uh, out of, um, out of QuakeCon next week. Um, but hey, you know... Uh, if, uh, if, uh, what was we're looking for? If, uh, you had your fill of announcements in the past couple of weeks between Evo, San Diego Comic Con, and E3, now we got, um, uh, what's I gonna say? Uh, now we got QuakeCon coming up, so I am totally distracted right now, guys. Uh, um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I'm excited. I want to see some more stuff. I, I want to see more Quake. And we'll definitely see it next weekend. Um, if anything, we'll probably on stream on Twitch. Some by the time we'll probably next week we'll probably have some more information about you know what they've announced. So fingers crossed. More Quake, please. Maybe maybe more Doom. Oh yeah, I don't know if I'd like to have more Doom DLC. That'd be pretty freaking awesome. But time will tell. Time will always tell. Um, all right. So our last story of the day. Now ESA. For those who don't know, um, ESA. Let me bring up the, the thing here. ESA is a European version of Games Done Quick, uh, and it has started today. Um, and you can check out more information at esamarathon.com. Um, now, the cool thing about it is that uh, it's basically the same thing, but it's in Europe. Um, basically, Games Done Quick, but in Europe. Um, and it's going to the entire week. I believe, I believe it's the entire week. So let me bring up their website um, and go to the schedule real quick. Uh, so let's see. Oh, we got. Oh, wow. And the players that are listed on here actually also have the the flag of what they're, where they're from. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I got tons of games we're going through the, for an entire week, uh, including let's see, Infamous. Uh, oh, hey, speaking of Half Life <laughs> or Quake, Quake, Quake Two, Half Life, um, Total o Overdose, uh, Bloodborne, um, uh, Star Fox Zero, Fast Racing Neo. Uh, Metal Storm, The Adams Family, <laughs> Tekken 3, what? No way. Oh, wow. There's a, a speedrun of a Tekken game, fighting game. Okay. I am very curious now. I kind of want to watch it. Oh, and we have a Tetris Grandmaster block as well. 
Uh, this guy too, Portal Cube. Uh, in the last game, it is Super Mario 64, 120 star trailer. So yeah, there's definitely good stuff here for this week. So if you want to see more games, uh, games done quick, check out ESA. Um, they'll be live for a full week, I believe, from the looks of it. Um, and yeah, uh, the times may differ, obviously, because you know they're in Europe and we're in the US. Uh, but definitely check it out, guys, when you get the chance. Donate. Uh, I believe that's. I believe they're donating for. Let's see. Let me just check real quick. Um, oh, I do not want to bring the stream up. <laughs> Please. Uh, all donations go directly to save the children and our tax deductible. Uh, so definitely check it out when you get the chance. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for the show. Uh, pretty, not many stories going, uh, going on today, but also because I'm also hosting it because there's me and no conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you go. That's your missions our podcast for today so before we end the show let me go transition if you enjoyed this podcast if you enjoy watching this or listening to on uh, audio be sure to check it out on our website at mission start podcast mission start podcast.com in the podcast section of our website um you can find it under uh well, the podcast section of the website <laughs> um <clears throat> we are live every uh, every sunday at 3 p.m pacific time on this twitch channel and uh, we also uh, have all our podcasts early on our Patreon page. So if, if you want to get in early on the podcast, uh, definitely check out patreon.com slash mission start podcast. Uh, again, we're also on iTunes and Stitcher if you ha- want to subscribe. Um, if you enjoy convention talk, if you enjoy us talking about convention we just been to um, and we have just covered, check out The Carnover, which is also in our podcast section, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher and Patreon. Um, check out The Carnover. It is on every time we go to the convention. Um, we have one coming up uh, for uh, Evo, as well as San Diego Comic Con. So yeah, definitely check out uh, that. And uh, yeah, pretty awesome, pod- pretty awesome podcast. Um, and if you enjoy the, if you enjoy comic books, entertainment, movies, anime, video games, just kind of like a like a wide range of just nerdy stuff. Check out the Rolling Twenties, hosted by Jeremy Wilson, um, which is as I said, he is. Him and the Rolling Twenties crew are in San Diego right now for Comic Con, and they are out there covering. If you haven't checked out already, our Instagram is full of photos and videos of the event, um, and a lot of news have been coming out this past weekend when it comes to Comic Con and all things nerdy. Uh, so let me check it out, guys. Uh, they are live every Friday on our website as well as on iTunes and Stitcher. So um, again, thank you guys for coming by. Um, if you're watching this. Hit that subscribe button on, on the YouTube channel. If you, um, uh, if you, um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> if you haven't already, please hit us up on our Patreon, our page, uh, patreon.com slash missions, our podcast. Um, and if you're watching this on Twitch or on YouTube, please subscribe to us on our Twitch channel. Hit that, hit that, uh, that follow button. We're close to 300, uh, viewers or not viewers, 300, uh, followers. So, Another day, another another follow for this Twitch channel. Um, thank you guys again, and uh, this has been Anthony Bianca from Mission Star Podcast, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>